Hello. Oh, hi. We are back. We are back for our third, our third night. Hello, Robin. Yeah, just like we just like we did with our mother's night the first day. Um, our opening our opening question just to in engaging with our relationships with fathers or grandfathers, what is something um what is something that you have learned from your father or your grandfather or a father figure or what is a favorite what is a favorite memory that you have? Mm, so thinking into um, some lesson that you have learned or a a favorite memory that you have you would like to share share with us here to get us get us started so we can see um yeah we can we can get a sense of our energy here in this in this um time together yeah like i shared this one's going to be a little bit more difficult for me because i do not have do not have really any um, positive father figures in my life. Maybe my maternal grandfather um, might be one one of the only ones that I can um, connect with. So, um, yeah, for those of you just coming in, the question, just that uh, that sense of any. A lesson, if you want to share a lesson that you have learned from your father or a father figure or any memory, um, favorite memory that you have um, with them. Oh, it is the beginning, Kelly. No worries. <laughs> We've just started. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Anybody have? Anybody have a lesson or do we all have... Do we all have uh, difficult, difficult relationships with our fathers? <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to think, I actually only have one. I have one memory with my with my um, my birth father, my biological father. Um, he he died when I was when I was two. So, um. Yeah, it's quite strange that I have that I have this memory, but my mother has told me that she didn't um, she didn't know this and she didn't tell it to me. So it's not something that I learned anywhere else. But um, I remember going to work with him one day, and he worked out. Um, he he was in gas and oil, and so he was working out on the field, and he took me with him one day, um, and um, bought me M and M's. And fed me M and M's, <laughs> so that's the that's the only memory I have of my of my father. Um, but it is it is special because it is the only one um, that I have. Lucy dancing on my dad's feet as a little kid is a good memory, but it's one of very few. Mm. Uh, yeah, we're on our father's night. Um. Left before I was born, but I met him when you were 25. Your relationship taught you about limitations and vulnerability of being human. Beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the lessons I have taught from the difficult relationships from father figures. Um, what has that taught me? Interesting. So I see, yeah, yeah. We don't have lots of people jumping in the jumping in the chat, sharing um, positive positive things. So um, I feel like a lot of us might be might be holding some some similar similar energies. And just to know that, um, I I will share just here in the beginning, just saying that um, honoring all of our different experiences in this space. Um, everything is um, okay to share if you feel comfortable and safe in this space to do that. Um, knowing that all of us have different relationships with fathers or father figures, uh, knowing that some of us have really, you know, 
really rotten, terrible relationships. Some of us might not have fathers at all. Um, some of us might have two fathers. Um, and yeah, so as we go through like the process today, and especially during our meditation, we're going to be inviting in um, really like the, the positive, loving aspects of the father archetype. Um, and the sort of like tapping into that that potential even that our you know our fathers that we might have strained relationships with or no relationship at all um, that potential that is that is that that is within them right because it is within all of us and so we're going to be tapping into that into that energy um, to um, yeah to connect with that more loving positive father archetype energy. Um, but again, anything you want to, you want to share in this space is, is welcome. Hello, Kay. Um, your maternal grandfather passed two weeks after you were born. You have no memory. Things he left behind for my continue to shape and enrich my life in ways I'm still discovering. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And some of those like stories that have been passed down, right? That's really beautiful. Yeah. And again, like understanding how my my father's energy has shaped me, even though, um, you know, I was only two when he died. Um, but hearing the stories about um, also that that energy of adventure, of taking risks, of um, just putting it all on the line. Um, and yeah. I see that. I see that coming through me a lot. So, so I will say that um, throughout Yule, you know, the first night is always Mother's Night. Um, and there's usually one night of the 12 that celebrates fathers and the male ancestors, but it's not set to, a, you know, a specific day or that that has been, you know, passed down through history that we can really... Um, yeah, that we can really pin it down to a specific date. So I chose today um, for a reason, um, as you know, yesterday was the solstice. And so the solstice, again, like I shared yesterday, being that point of transition between, you know, like the darkest night and the the light growing. And so we had on the first day, the mother's night being sort of that energy of the um, the inward reflection, and you know, if you um, if you're a part of uh, my my communities and you know about cycle awareness, you'll know that the two the two sides of the cycle one is the one is the lunar path, um, which is when we're moving inward, and um, it's that autumn and winter sort of energy of of the seasons. And that um, embraces the the mother aspects, that mother archetype um, aspect, that you know that lunar lunar energy. And then on the other side is the solar path, and that's sort of like the spring summer energies of the season. Um, and that sort of embraces the the father archetypes, um, the the outward um, moving energy. And so I did, I put it here because we did Mother's Night, um, connecting with that, that dark half. Then we had the winter solstice as the point of transition. And so now we are here and the um, day got just a little bit longer um, today than it was, or yeah, the day got a little bit longer today than it was yesterday. So this is sort of like the energy of um, bringing that that sun energy back just a little bit, a little bit more. Um, and one thing I did this morning, I actually woke up with the sunrise this morning, and I um, I see there's at least one of you here that also did the same that you shared in our circle, and. Um, yeah, it was like a really, it was a really beautiful practice. And usually like I, usually I wake up like, um, 10, 10 or 11 in the morning. And, um, I woke up at five, five forty this morning to, to be with the sunrise that came up at, at six fifteen, And, um, 
you know, I'm not able to see the horizon where I live because there's just buildings all around in the city. And, um, but I just sat and I, you know, I had a vision. Uh, I was able to see the sky and um, I watched as the sun's rays turned. Um, there was only like two clouds in the sky, but I watched as the sun rays turned the clouds, um, you know, from they were white to begin with. And then they started turning like a, um, a golden pink, like a pink golden color. And it was really, it was really, really beautiful. And at one point the cloud formed into um, what I saw as a phoenix and then the, you know, and then it dissipated. And so that idea of like um, having this power to like rise, rise from the ashes and transform. And that is very much this, um, you know, this energy as we're growing in the light and connecting to that, um, you know, connecting to that more masculine father type energy um, here for our session today. So describing a little bit of that. Um, let's see here. Heather, father wasn't around and is not alive. I do, you do have nice memories of going to the desert the desert all oh, to fly hot air balloons. Mm, I love the idea of being like the hot air balloon, weightless, soaring, and navigating the world. Ooh, that's lovely. Yeah. Uh, oh, Kelly, you did the same. Oh, a birthday sunrise. Yes. Happy birthday, Kelly. I'm so glad you came. <laughs> oh, yes. The sun came out here today too for the first time in several days been so gray and overcast it felt very meaningful oh yeah i bet um yes that's very beautiful yeah kelly i'd love to hear how how else you are or how else you have celebrated your birthday mm, beautiful all right, and the other thing I wanted to bring in here was that um, within within Norse paganism, um, which you know has a lot of a lot of the roots from Yule, are now passed down into Norse paganism. And one of the things that a lot of modern day pagans um, practice are following along the nine noble virtues throughout um, the days of Yule, and so. As I was reading through the nine noble virtues, a lot of them had this, um, you know, more masculine father, um, father archetype energy. And so I thought it was um, something that we could, you know, explore today together. So if we have the nine, the nine noble virtues, we have um, courage, truth, honor, perseverance, fidelity, discipline, hospitality, industriousness, and self-reliance. So I'm sure like when you hear those, you know, it feels like a, oh, like a really, a really wonderful father would have all of those aspects, wouldn't they? Um, they would be holding all of those virtues. So let's look, I thought we could look within us and see um, see how we are holding these nine noble virtues ourselves. Um, so if we want to connect with that, that inner father, um, that we were talking about. Okay. So I'm going to type them. I'm going to type them in the comments so that you can see them. So there are our nine noble virtues. So I would love to hear what, um, which noble virtue do you feel like is most present for you, which one do you feel the closest with? Like you feel like you embody it um, maybe more than the others. Do you have have one of these virtues that feels really really close to your close to your heart, close in your body? Um, yeah, I feel the closest to truth. I'm I'm probably with you there. Mine is probably um, oh self reliance too. Yeah. And courage. Those are like the three. Courage, truth, and self-reliance are probably um oh but perseverance too. But probably I'm gonna say I'm gonna say truth. Yeah, that's the next question, Lucy. <laughs> truth and discipline. Okay, I find discipline really difficult. <laughs> really difficult. Um yeah. 
Anybody else? Which one feels feels like it's easy? It's easy to do. It feels really close to your heart. Mm. Yeah, now that actually I, I'm looking at it for, I'm looking at it again, it's probably probably perseverance. I think that might be what's closest to me right now. Yeah. And Cassia, you are getting, you're getting way ahead. We're going to do some of these affirmations um, during our meditation. Um, thank you for bringing that, bringing that energy in here. Beautiful. Perseverance, hospitality, and self-reliance. Mm, lovely KS. Yes. Mm. Okay, then on, on the flip side, which one seems quite difficult and you feel quite distant from it? Which one... Yeah, feels like, um, yeah, which one feels like it's a lot harder to connect with? Hmm. Yeah, mine would probably be discipline and hospitality, actually. Hospitality is probably pretty low for me at the moment. Yeah, and it's hard. I'm finding it they're like, oh, I'm finding it that it's hard because I was raised, um, you know, I was socialized as a female. And so being socialized as a female and saying that I don't feel very hospitable, that like, that feels difficult to say. Um, not sure what hospitality means. Hmm. Anybody want to share what does hospitality mean to you? I can share what it what I what I'm connecting. Feather, I would like to be more disciplined. Mm, yeah, discipline feels far away from me, but I'm not sure if I want to be more disciplined. Um, I don't have it because no idea what it is. Yeah, I feel like um, hospitality, just when I think about hospitality, I think about like that welcoming, welcoming in of, you know, people in their... Um, Actually, now is now that I explain it like this, it's probably I I do actually do this, welcoming in people of like different experiences, different um, ways of life, and like just um, inviting them, inviting them in to the like the the warmth and loving care that you can that you can give them, and I mean like if you want to think about it practically, hospitality would be like inviting people into your home, right? That would be a more like traditional definition for it, but I'm seeing it as like this, um, yeah, like this, your, your, your arms, your arms are able to re reach wide and, um, distant to embrace and, and bring in, um, a lot of different people, no matter their, their experiences or what, um, what they believe or things like that. Mm. Um, Yes, Lucy, you, that's exactly what I was trying to say, but you said it a lot more, um, a lot more concise. Hospitality, being open and welcoming to others, to your space. Yeah. And whether that's like the space of your heart or the space of your physical, you know, um, your physical house or dwelling. Hmm. Um, sometimes I like to make an environment in hospital because I don't want them to chill with me. Yeah, Kelly, that's kind of what I've been sharing. I'm not very hospitable to my actual, like, physical space, my physical place. Um, but I feel like I'm a lot, I'm really hospitable in my heart, um, and, and welcoming a lot of people's, um, experiences and, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, K wanting to cultivate courage. Great. Um, honoring and speaking my truth is on my learning curve. Mm. To shed shame and guilt is getting easier with time. Yeah. Mm. It still needs effort. Yeah. It takes, takes some effort. Hopefully when we go through the meditation, some of these things you feel distant from, well, um, you'll feel a, feel a strength coming from within for that. Um, okay, so let us explore a little bit about the father archetype before we go into our meditation. So I think um, thinking about the father archetype, I want to talk about, I feel like for me, it's a lot easier to talk about the shadow father. Um, so I thought we'd start with talking about the shadow father um, a little bit. 
and then we'll talk about the the loving positive um, aspects of the father um, figure and hopefully that will guide us in nicely to our meditation together so the f- the shadow of the father if you think about um, the father archetype and the shadows that they can hold uh, share with us in the in the chat what you experience um, or what you see in society as being the shadow you know thinking about things like toxic masculinity um, patriarchy um, white supremacy colonization <laughs> like all of these things coming from this um, this shadow aspect um, thinking about things like um, domination um, being power hungry and also this this sense of like, what are these stereotypes that um, are put on men in in society? Things like um, you can't cry because it makes you look weak. Um, that they're supposed to be in charge of like the household and like have more weight in making decisions. Um, a lot of this like control and power dynamics, right? Violent, controlling, not allowed to have feelings other than anger, right? Like anger is okay, but um, all of the other emotions live in the shadows. Um, yeah, and we're talking collectively here. We're not talking, we're not going to, we're going to point out some pop pop culture references for shadow fathers. But um, yeah, thinking about in our collective systems that we have, because a lot of the collective systems, right, they are set up on this foundation um, of um, of patriarchy with the with the masculine in the in the center um, being the most important thing to uh, you know connect with and appease in these in these systems. Um, anybody else have examples of of the shadow shadow of the father? Um, low accountability, suppressed emotions, yeah. And you think of kind of like the opposite of the nine virtues as well, right? So like um, lack of commitment. Um, So um, yeah, that that shadow father aspect that, um, you know, fathers leaving their families have not having that um, that commitment. What are the what are some of the other ones um, that would be opposite of these virtues? Um, Yeah, like, yeah, just like the opposite, not having, not having honor, not having truth, um, you know, lying, gaslighting, mm, absence, mm -hmm, tyranny, yeah, mm mm-hmm. All right. So then thinking about in, in like pop culture references, can you think of any father figures that would be this shadow aspect? Um, and you know, like there's, there's one that's probably, um, probably a lot of us, a lot of us are familiar with, and that would be, um, Darth Vader, right? So in, in Star Wars, thinking about Darth Vader as a father, that would definitely be the shadow, the shadow aspect of the father archetype. Um, can you think of any other, any other father figures, um, in, in sort of like pop culture references, um, for those of you that are connected to, to pop culture, um, some others that I, I was, um, thinking about and looking up before this, um, you know, some are more like very, very apparent, like Darth Vader, and some are just a little, a little bit less than that. Um, and I don't know, is anybody else here a Gilmore Girls fan? <laughs> Um, Gilmore Girls has been one of my favorite shows, um, for a long time, but thinking about, um, Rory's father, Chris, right? And Gilmore Girls, um, it carries a lot of these shadow aspects, like always, um, you know, always, um, falling back on promises, like never showing up when, um, when they're expecting him to, like not being able to, um, be like a stable, um, a stable part of, of her life. Um, so that's, those are some aspects of that. Um, nobody else a Gilmore Girls fan? Anybody? (laughs) Um, thinking about, um, who else? 
uh, in the movie or the book Matilda, thinking about Matilda's dad, if you know that, um, Harry Wormwood, um, in, in Game of Thrones, Tywin Lannister, um, and the... Um, I was looking up, somebody also mentioned um, Thanos, you know, in, in the Marvel comics. Um, Kelly, you laughing at Gilmore Girls because you like it or you're making fun of me? <laughs> um, hi, Todd. Oh, you're a Gilmore Girls fan too. Great. I don't feel so alone. Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that, but yeah. Thanks for sharing it, KS. Um, and the last one is just the, one of the shows I'm watching at the moment is, um, is Rain and King Henry in the first, in the first season of Rain, um, is definitely, definitely the shadow aspect of the father. Um, because you're like anyone, anyone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to feel alone. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, right, Lucy? Um, you'll probably find a lot of shadow aspects in, in kings throughout um throughout the centuries, that's my guess. Okay, but so we've we've dealt with the shadow aspects. Let's like put that aside and and move into these loving positing aspects of, um, a father, father figure, caregiver. So what are some qualities beside these, um, nine noble virtues? What are some of the other qualities we can talk about? Um, the things I thought of was, um, protection. So like they, you feel protected in, in that, in that relationship, in that space, you feel safe, um, stability and structure, um, sustainability, uh, having a guide. So like being a guide, being very like giving and providing, uh, responsibility, and again, courageous and discipline, which we share, I'm sure already shared in the nine, the nine virtues. Nurturing. Yeah. If you have a father that is nurturing, that's really beautiful. Um, Robin, always fixing things in the house. Yeah. So like being ready to, um, being ready to put their, put their body, body to work to fix things. Um, yeah, definitely. Hmm. Any other, any other patient? Yeah. Beautiful. The go-getter. Hmm. Love it. Yeah. Lovely. Any other positive, positive aspects? Involved and present, beautiful, yes. Mm. Um, the breadwinner, yeah. I guess it depends on on how how they how they embody that, right? Um, if they embody it in a way that's very, um, yeah, like as I was thinking about, like like a very um, generous giving provider um, in that, whereas being a breadwinner could lead to that shadow. The shadow of that would be the the power power and control, right? Um, so yeah, um, yeah. Oh, Todd, that's beautiful. She finally left. Oh, oh, I'm so glad. Yes. Um, a lot of those toxic jobs, right, that are um, that are built on those uh, those foundations of patriarchy are the shadow um, as well. That shadow of the masculine. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that she was able to, to get out from that. Um, the cheerleader. Yeah, that's a great one, KS. Yeah, thinking about like where I grew up, like sports being a very, uh, a very important thing. And like the connection that, um, yeah, the connection that, that children, my friends and people had with their fathers coming to, to cheer them on at sporting events. That's very, yeah, that's, that's a good one. 
Um, okay, and then let's think about some some archetypes of of the father that would be more more loving and positive. Um, and so I thought of some some archetypes that are, um, you know, outside of pop culture references. I couldn't really think of any for um, the shadow, but for the loving aspects, thinking about like the emperor in tarot, that would be like a, a father leader type energy, um, you know, and balancing with the with the empress. Um, so we have that that emperor leader that um, brings that structure and that stability um, to the tarot. Um, and thinking about um, like Gandalf and the Lord of the Rings um, being sort of like that wise guide um, that is, you know, like supporting, um, supporting the journey, um, that we're going on. Um, the emperor, king of pentacles, cups, yeah, all of the kings, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, thinking about, uh, uh, Mufasa in the Lion King, that was one that, when I, as I was researching, that was one that came up a lot. Um, everybody seems to see Mufasa as this very, um, loving aspect of the father archetype. Um, yes, this benevolent protective father. Yeah. Um, who else do we have? Um, so going back to the Game of Thrones, it would be Ned Stark. Um, it would be the, this loving father figure. Um, and the other show, the show I'm watching with my spouse at the moment, we're watching The Last Kingdom, and one of my favorite, one of my favorite characters in The Last Kingdom is, um, Father Bioka, who is a, who is a monk, a priest, um, and just, like, one of those people that will, like, do, like, very loyal, and will, like, do anything to protect those, um, that he loves, and so that's, um, yeah, that's a, that's an energy I will be connecting with as we go into our meditation. Anybody else have examples of um, loving father, father figures that we can all connect with? Will Smith from The Pursuit of Happiness. It's been a really long time since I watched that, but um, yeah, I remember the, I remember the, um, I remember the general, the general feel of it. Uh, thanks for sharing that, KS. Anybody else have any examples of that? Uh, and also thinking about any, I don't, uh, I don't usually connect to deities, but there would also be deities that would hold the shadow aspect of the father and the light aspect, um, the loving aspects of the father. So if you connect with any deities um, like that, I'd also love to hear them. And so that others can connect possibly to the, to that energy as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not that, I'm not that familiar with deities. I have a, I have a very strained relationship to, um, God, the father in Christianity. Um, part of the, part of the reason I left the Christian church. And so, um, I feel like probably God, the father is not the shadow, but it comes through as the shadow by the way of at least the, the churches that I, um, that I grew up in, in the way that, the way that he was portrayed, um, in those, in those areas. So that would be a whole, that would be a whole other live I could go through. Um, so yeah, we all, we'll leave it there. Hmm. Okay. Shiva, the protector. Yeah. So if you think like, yeah, traditionally talking about, you know, divine masculine and feminine Shiva and Shakti, um, would definitely be two, two that come through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. So are you ready to go? Let's go into our meditation. I've already been here for 37 minutes. I'm always like, I'm going to keep these ones short. Um, so let's do our meditation together. Um, Archangel Michael. Okay. Yeah. I don't work with angels either, but thanks for sharing that, Lucy. 
yeah, I'm not not very familiar, but I I trust I trust that um yeah, you're familiar with those loving aspects of Arch Archangel Angel Michael or Michael. I don't know how you even say it. Um okay. So we're gonna go into our meditation. It'll probably be about 10-15 minutes. Um yeah. Excellent. So go ahead and get your get your comfortable comfortable position. You can go ahead and um drop down in to your body. If it feels comfortable for you, you can go ahead and close your eyes as well. And just taking a couple deeper breaths as you arrive to your inner landscape here in the present moment. And as we are connecting with this stable, supporting energy of the Father. First, wanting your body to feel stable and supported. So if there's anywhere you need to move so that your back feels supported, so that you feel the connection of the support below you, so that you know you can let go into this space being held in this stable supportive position so anything you need to do with your body to feel more stable go ahead and do that now and then feeling that feeling that's point of connection below you that is holding you here and allowing your body to relax and give way to that just a little more with each exhale that you take and trusting trusting that you are supported here that this is a safe place for you to go deeper within and explore your connection to the fathering energy. And when you are ready, you're invited to imagine a place a place in nature that feels really safe, that you feel protected. Maybe it is in the woods with really tall trees around you. Maybe it is in a cave where you feel safe and protected. Maybe it is a valley Imagining a place on this earth that you feel safe and protected. When you can feel that safety from within, you're invited to invite your father or a father figure that you feel connected to, to come into the space with you. And again, we're connecting to that energy of this figure in their, in their divine essence. All of the things that are within them that are loving and kind and caring. Invite that energy 
that they hold into this space. And if you have a strained or difficult or no relationship with this person, maybe just imagining them as, as you had always dreamed they would be. Or dreamed that they are now. And allow them to embody that aspect. And if it feels safe, allowing them to approach you and be with you in a way that does feel supportive and loving and compassionate. And then we are going to invite in the, the next generation, or the previous generation, the grandfather figure. And again, in the same energy, allow them to arrive in this place in nature that is safe, that you are protected in, allowing them to arrive in their divine essence. and coming towards you to support you in the way that you most need it in this moment. And then again, inviting in another generation with the great-grandfather and even if you do not know this person, you've never made contact, you don't know any stories, just allow that, that essence of the great-grandfather energy to come through. And coming towards you to support you as you have these three three father energies supporting you and protecting you here in this moment. And then imagining your male ancestors, those father figures, coming through from generations past or as far back as you can imagine coming into this space and forming a circle around you so that you are in the center and all of your ancestors, father figures are around you. And in this space, they have this desire to fill you with all of these loving aspects of the Father. So first, we're going to imagine that they are forming a protective bubble around you. So imagine this shield of protection that is circling around you and over you. And you know that if any difficulty, any, any negativity that comes your way is just going to, to bounce off this bubble it's going to, it's not going to be able to penetrate. 
and come near you. You are protected in this space right now. And feel that care and kindness that they are giving, that they are providing to shelter you in this protective space. And I'm going to read through some affirmations that this circle of ancestors and father figures are wanting you to know about yourself. Connecting with that inner father within you, those noble virtues within you, so that you can embody them as you go from this place. So you can say these affirmations either out loud after me or silently. I have the courage to face any obstacle that comes my way. Everything I need is already within me. I can transform negativity into positive energy. I accept full responsibility for the past. I am a leader. I create my own path. I can control how I react to a situation. I continue to move forward with my inner guidance. I see setbacks as an opportunity to reevaluate and continue on. I learn from my mistakes and move forward. I believe in myself and what I set out to do. I do not give my power away. I embody it. I am courageous. I am strong. I seek the truth. I always persevere. I am disciplined. I am self-reliant. I am wise. I am loving. So feel all of these affirmations as they wash over you in your protective bubble of safety and stability.
maybe holding on to one that feels the most present for you to carry forward. And as the protective bubble opens up, and you know it's time to say goodbye and thank you to those that showed themselves in this protective circle. To take your time to share your gratitude and say your goodbyes. And allowing these ancestors and father figures to go on their way, fade into the background and you are here fully embodying all of these virtues all of these powers that have been given to you in this space this protective bubble you are safe and held here. And you can continue on carrying that energy with you. Whenever you need that sense of safety and protection, calling back in this energy, in this space. And when you, when you feel like your journey has come to its completion, allowing your awareness to come back into your physical body, and maybe you want to sit up a little taller, Maybe you want to expand your shoulders and your chest a little wider, feeling that sense of power and dignity within you. Holding your, holding your chin high as you continue on your journey. We'll just take one last inhale together. Feeling that power and strength flow through you. And then as you exhale, you can gently breathe your eyes open. You can wiggle your toes, your fingers. Move your body gently coming back into our collective space together. Hmm. <sighs> How did that feel? How did that feel to invite in that fathering energy, having that protection, having those affirmations said over you? Hmm. Is there any, is there any of the affirmations that really, really connected with you? You want to carry on? Uh, I'll just end by sharing um, just some simple ritual ideas that you could do to connect um, connect to this energy of the Father's Father's Day, Father's Night. 
Um, one of the rituals you could do is uh, offer a libation, which is a it's a liquid offering to the earth, um, and making sure that you know I would uh, I would ask ask the earth first if that's okay, um, because you know a libation here lots a lot of them done on this night would be done with mead. Um, so that's again connecting with that Norse ancestry. So any sort of like mead, cider, um, you know, whiskey, anything like that, if that feels uh, if that feels okay, and any sort of um, you know drink that maybe your your father or your you know fa your patrilineal ancestry um, would have been connected to, um, offering that as as a libation. Um, and also making any sort of dishes from the ancestry from your patrilineal um, line it could be something um, you can connect with. If you have an altar, you can put a picture of your father or any other um, ancestor, um, father figure ancestors on your altar and make an offering for that um, on your altar. Connecting in with a father god figure, so either like reading um, reading a folk story or a mythological story of a you know the father the father figure and deity or doing some sort of meditation with that um, with that archetype. And um, another one is house cleaning and protective, uh, protective spells or rituals for your home space. So thinking about your home space being this place of stability, this place of safety, this place of protection from, you know, like the outside, the outside world. Um, and salt can be a really good thing for this. Um, you can find, you know, you can find things if you Google, but if you um, put salt in like the corners of your room, um, at the corners of the outside of your house, um, as you say, some sort of prayer of protection over over your house, your home, um, or making, I've seen people make like um, herb, like little herb bags, and then putting that on the door. Um, like hanging hanging things over the door as well for protection. Um, you can do that as well to connect here with that protective fathering energy for for your home. Um, another thing you could do is start to create those goals for 2022 and actually uh, make some action plans, like make some decisions about how you're going to implement them and um, so that's very much that, uh, that energy of, of the leader, the go-getter, the taking the action, um, and putting in place some of those disciplines that you might want to hold on to, to make sure, um, you're working towards your goals as you go, as you go into the new year. And the last one is just like the, the very practical one of calling, calling your father or grandfather, um, or some father figure that you feel connected to and just sharing your, sharing your gratitude for them. Um, so those are just some simple, simple ritual ideas that you can do to connect into this, this fathering, fathering energy today. Hmm. Yeah, and if it's if it's still um, if it's still day where you are, um, you can also just thought of like you can also go out if it's sunny, um, spend some time just soaking the sun on your on your skin, um, taking in that that solar that solar energy that warms um, that warms you, especially in the in the winter, right? Okay, lovely. Well, it's been wonderful being with you all here in this energy. Um, yeah, if this if this felt supportive for you and you would like to um, give a give a donation, that is greatly um, appreciated. And um, yeah, just helps helps continue this um, 
this protective, supportive, stable, safe energy that I get here on Insight Timer. Um, feeling like, yeah, oh, okay, I'm just now connecting these together, thinking about like as I uh, as I have my own business, right? And the, the structures that really that really support me. Insight Timer is um, is one of those places that really supports me in um, having having my own business. So it's like Insight Timer is a little bit of a it's a fathering a fathering figure in my um, in my business and all of you that that support me um, here in this place, um, sharing that that fathering energy to help me become sustainable. So thank you for that. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> um, Papa Insight Timer, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely it. Um, yeah, that's very interesting to think about. I will have to have to explore that, explore that a little more. The fathering energies in in my business. Hmm. Yeah, those places that. Um, yeah, and a lot of a lot of times, right? I'm sure a lot of your work environments, um, while some of them, like we heard from from Todd, um, his partner's toxic um, place, right, which would be more of that shadow, but um, those those places that really support you and give you the stability in life, right? Um, so that that provide you with. Um, with the money that provides you with the means, um, those would be, those would be fathering, fathering structural, um, systems in, in your life too, that you can share some, share some gratitude for those things, um, as well today. Thank you, Cassia, for your donation as well. Um, okay, it's time, it's time for dinner. Um, I will hopefully see you again, um, as well. If you missed some of the beginning or you want to revisit and come back to this, this, um, I've been putting up all of the recordings from the 12 days of Yule on my YouTube channel. So if you, um, my YouTube channel is just my name, Megan Noreen. So if you search my name there, you should be able to find it. Um, and so the mother's night from the first night and the winter solstice ritual from yesterday. And then this one will be up there after I eat, after I eat dinner, I will, I will put it up there. Um, that you can, you can find it there. And then tomorrow we're going to be talking about the wild hunt, um, which is kind of like a, it's kind of like a spooky, a spooky story, um, to the Yule traditions. And then we'll be connecting to, um, our animal, our animal allies, uh, that are, that are with us. And so that's, that's going to be fun. There's been, there's been a particular animal that's been coming through for me almost all year. So we'll see how that, see how that comes through, um, tomorrow. Hmm how the root chakra is often my father energy. Yeah, it definitely is that, that stable grounding, um, energy, those foundations. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I hope I'll see you. I hope I'll see you tomorrow for our, our wild hunt connecting with animal allies and yeah. Hope you have lovely, Lovely morning, afternoons, or evenings, wherever you are, um, connecting in with that supporting, protective, safe energy that's um, that's all around you. Just open your eyes and become aware of what those things are in your life and giving gratitude and honor um, to them. All right, lovelies, I will see you again soon.